my people, I'm still here. I know. You're still there. I'm here. Here's 9-3, okay? Uh, easy day today. We're going to do a whole bunch of Desmos stuff, a whole bunch of graphing. Not going to be too bad today. Today. Don't wait. The hard stuff is, uh, is coming. Are we? I feel like you guys are crooked. I don't really know that it's going to help anything, but eh, who really cares? All right, anyway, new word today, double root. We're talking about number of solutions, right? Up until now, we haven't really solved too many. Now we begin the solving part, um, or at least the easy solving part, of quadratic functions, okay? And one of really three things can happen, okay? Um, we can get two answers. Notice how many times this graph crosses the x-axis. We can get one answer. Notice how many times this graph crosses the x-axis. Or we can get no answers. Notice how many times this graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, And it's all about how many times do you go through the x-axis. Or how many x-intercepts are there. Or how many roots. Right? Roots. Okay? So we have double roots. Okay? This is not a double root. You would think it is. This is the double root, okay? Um, anyway, why is that? I don't know. I don't know. But here we go. <laughs> Here's our function. We put it into Desmos. It gave me this graph. Solve it. Again, things to note, folks. Trinomial equal to zero. This is the way we have to solve these, okay? We are going to go into many different methods to solve quadratic functions. The first one is graphing, but I gotta have everything equal to zero. Okay, when we look at that, hey, I'm looking right here, right here. I've got two roots. One is at negative two, one is at this number here, which is at five. Two, five. Give me your best curly brackets. Your curly brackets should be perfect, awesome by this point in the year. Okay? And that's it, guys. There's your two answers. Okay? Same thing here. Again, notice, trinomial set equal to zero. We're graphing it. I'm looking for the x-intercepts, the roots, the solutions. This number here, this number here. This is negative two. This is four. Done. That's it. You're thinking, well, we should just graph everything. That might not be a bad idea. Here's our double root. Why is it a double root? Well, eventually we're going to factor these. That's why we worked so hard to factor stuff. And when we factor it, we'll see that it's a double root because we get the same binomial twice, guys. If we were to factor this here, this will turn into um, x plus 3 and x plus 3, right? It's a double root because we are expecting two answers, but I only get one, right? That one answer right here happens to be at a negative 3. That's right. Okay? Interesting. Uh, what else we got? Graph this one. Okay, does this one have any answers? This does not have real answers, right? In Algebra 2, you will learn that, yes, you can approximate these um, with imaginary numbers, and you will learn about them, and you will do all kinds of fun things. But for now, no, we don't cross the x-axis, so no real solutions. Okay? All right, this is where graphing and Desmos fall flat on their face and become absolutely worthless to us. What happens in cases like this? How am I supposed to know what number this is, folks? How am I supposed to know what number that is? Okay? So the graphing's not always going to work, and when it doesn't, it's because this happens, right? We don't get nice numbers. So it says estimate. Well, I mean, I guess I could estimate it. Whatever. Um, here is 0. Here's 1. I'm just going to say 1 half, okay? So 1 half is an answer, and then this one over here is an answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to say 3.45. No idea why I put that, but I did, okay? Anyway, so approx estimated, that's what I did. <laughs> My bad, it said nearest 10. There, <laughs> nearest 10, done. All right? Again, if I had decimals up and we actually knew what the rest of that decimal looked like, we could do that, okay? Because Desmos will give us decimals, okay? And we'll see that here in, the couple, in a couple slides. Um, same thing here, estimate, right? If we don't have good numbers, estimate them to the what? The nearest tenth? 
Okay, so this one right here, I'm going to say is uh, 0 0.1. That is a terrible bracket. And this one right here, 1, 2, 3, 4. So something just a little less than 5. Great. I went with 1 tenth and 4.9. Okay. All right. What else do we have? Ah, more projectile motion. Consuelo builds a rocket. Here's my function. The equation models the flight of the rocket. So imagine rocket boom, launched into the air. Okay. What are your two variables? Height of the rocket, time. Okay. All right. Um, the rocket is launched from ground level. What height does the ground have? Zero. That's right. Okay. At a velocity of 250 feet per second, H is the height, right? T is the time. Approximately how long was her rocket in the air? Luckily for you, so I, I threw this on Desmos. Again, the question is, how long was her rocket in the air? So here is Desmos, right? I Type the function in. There it is. Now, you're going to have to play with your windows. So you're going to have to hit the little wrench up there. Play with your windows, right? Because we're dealing with some big numbers here, right? Our normal graph only goes from 10 to 10, like negative 10 to 10, right? Negative 10 to negative 10. Look, my graph goes from negative, I don't know, 700 all the way up to 1,000, right? It goes from negative 20 to about positive 20. So you're going to have to change your windows, okay? And then it will take its nice parabolic shape. How long was the rocket in the air for? Well, remember, rocket got launched from the ground. That makes sense that zero, zero, right, would be an ordered pair. Rocket goes up, right? Ooh, looky there. What does that ordered pair mean? Bonus question, if you can tell me that. Bonus points. Well, at 7.813 seconds, that's my x value, the rocket had this height, 976.563 feet. Okay, sounds pretty cool. All right, what else do we know? Well, we know right here, okay? At this time right here, 15.625 seconds, it had a height of zero, meaning it came back to the ground. So how long was the rocket in the air for? Well, it started here at a time of zero, went all the way up, came all the way back down at a time of 15.625, okay? So... If we're trying to answer approximately how long was the rocket in the air, guys, that's that 15.625 seconds, okay? Doesn't seem too bad. Great. Last question for the day. Martin hits a golf ball. Fantastic. Definitely going to pick on one of our golfers uh, in, in this question here. Anyway, we hit a golf ball with this much velocity. Uh, there's no way it could be Kyle. He ain't going to hit the ball. <laughs> Kendrick, no. We'll probably go to Leah for this one. The function, here it is, models the flight of the golf ball hit at the ground level. Again, what is the height of the golf ball when we hit it? Zero. That's right. You guessed right. Um, how long was the golf ball in the air? So, conveniently enough for you guys, right, I have this one graph. Go away. Get, here it is right here. Okay. Um, yeah, could we zoom in a little bit there? Fantastic. All right. So here's our golf ball, right? Remember, we see uh, all the quadrants, but really, guys, these quadratic functions, these projectile motion problems, we're really only concerned with quadrant one. Okay. So here's Leah, hits the golf ball, golf ball goes all the way up, whoop, comes all the way back down. All right, now, we know at a time of zero, golf ball had a height of zero, okay? Nicely enough, right, and you can, I don't know if you can see it on the video very well, it'll give me, right, the vertex. Here's my vertex. So, what does 3.75 comma 225 represent in this problem? Use your variables. Use their units of measure. So, at 3.75 x's, the golf ball is at 225 y's, right? 3.75 seconds, we were at 225 feet, okay? How long did the golf ball take to hit the ground? Well, it hits the ground right here. And that's your time, right? At 7.5 seconds, the golf ball has a height of zero. 
it makes sense. The golf ball starts out with a height of zero because it's on the ground, flies all the way up into the air, 225 feet. That's a pretty good apex, right, for a golf ball. Boop, comes all the way back down to zero at seven and a half seconds later. Okay, there you go. Um, so guys, I think that's probably enough for us to get going here on 9-3. So uh, not a bad day today. Again, use Desmos. Remember, use the little wrench up here, guys, as you need it. Type in whatever you want your X and Y to look like. That's how we do that. So uh, have a great day. I'll see you later.